Sisters, have you ever seen people who looked excited to be in worship? Minister Randall, there is a look of enthusiasm about them and excitement uh, seems to envelop them. And I discovered Deacon Henderson, whenever we are excited, we are motivated to do more than we would normally do. Go further than we would normally go and withstand more than we would normally withstand. When Jesus forgave the woman who was living in adultery, she was excited and ran through the town uh, hollering and screaming, come and see a man. When the woman discovered that Christ had risen from the dead, they ran with joy to tell the disciples. But there is an old song that says, we're glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. He didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. And the thought of those simple words describe the joy of all believers when they rendered another service in the kingdom of God. Anticipation contributes to our gladness as well. Brothers and sisters, uh, consider the man who was rolled in the church in a wheelchair, Sunita, for an entire year because he didn't have the strength to walk. And they called him, they, they called him Clapping Charlie. All week long, Clapping Charlie barely had enough strength to rise, to raise his hand, but he insisted on worshiping every Sunday. From the moment they rolled him in the door, Sister Henderson Clapping Charlie started clapping his hands. 
He clapped when the choir sang. He clapped after the announcements were read. He clapped during the altar call. And he clapped even during the sermon. But after a while, somebody asked him, Deacon Hill, Charlie, why, why do you clap so much when you are sick? And Charlie looked at the man and said, I'm celebrating. The man, the man was puzzled. Celebrating what, Charlie? You're in a wheelchair. We're praying for your healing. But it hadn't come yet. But what, what, what are you celebrating? And at the thought of the healing, Charlie started clapping his hands again. And he began to say, I know that the Lord is going to help me with this battle. So listen, I can't wait until the battle is over. I'm clapping and celebrating my healing now. When God has done something for us, we are excited and certainly we are glad. When God is doing something in our lives, we, we, we don't have to go around and tell anybody. They can see the expression and gladness on our faces. And When we're expecting God to do something for us, we are happy and then we are glad about it. Somebody said, if you're happy, and you know it, you ought to clap your hand. If you're happy and you know it, you ought to shout for joy. Yeah. And when we go to church, and when the church gathers for worship, praise and prayer, every saints come before the throne together with friends and family in spirit of joy and happiness. And that's why David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us. Any glad folk in the house today? Yeah, yeah, the house might not be full, but I'm glad to be in service one more time. Because I discovered, I discovered that somebody, somebody here wanted to be here today, Alonzo, but due to circumstances or other reasons that they are not able to be in the house of the Lord. And since I'm here, I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be glad and I become the praise and magnify. As Christians, we, we enjoy kingdom service. We, we enjoy serving others, worshiping with others, praying with others. Each time we gather, we say the words of the old song, glad to be in the service. I wish I had a witness here. Anybody glad to be in worship? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody glad to be in the service? Just one more. I just said to the other, he didn't have to. But certainly, I'm glad that the Lord did. So listen, this text focus on Luke as he described the gladness and singleness of the heart of the early church fellowship. But Luke notes that the early believers was enthusiastic about worship. It was not considered a chore, a burden, or an obligation. But, 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 but it was, it, it, yeah, yeah, they, they, they came together as one body with gladness and the singleness of heart. In doing so, they prayed for the sick and, 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 and constantly praised God. And the power of their praise, according to verse 37, uh, attracted others to fellowship and many were added to the church. And that's the problem. In many of our church, I tell preachers all across this country, you, it's not your church. So don't worry about it if folk don't come because the Bible said that the Lord add to the church. And let me tell y'all something. See, because oftentimes we think the church is growing when folk join the church. But listen, sometimes it's not growth, it's a swelling. Anytime your legs start swelling up on you, that ain't growth. Baby. You got a problem. And many of our churches ain't growing. They just swelling with all kind of people. I thought I'd drop that on you for free. And so, so listen, it's never the quantity of your membership, but it's the quality of the membership. I'd rather have 10 members that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost than have a thousand on their way to hell. Because church membership, it does not save you. Huh? The Bible declared that you must be, you got to be what? Born again. And you can tell whether or not folk been born again because anytime you got to pump and prime folk. Listen, I don't need nobody to pump me up. I don't need nobody to prime me up because when I think of the goodness of Jesus Christ and all that he done for me. 
My hands come together. Joy bear wings in my heart. I can praise him if I got to praise him all by myself. And so then the church joined in the regular praises of God. And they partook in the, in the ordinance of breaking bread, celebrating the memorial of Christ's death. And that's why he says as often as you eat of this cup and drink of this cup, eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you show forth the Lord's death until he come. But, 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 but now we're making things convenient for folk. But if you really, really love God, should nobody have to make things convenient for you. Sunday ought to be set aside for the day of the Lord because every day belongs to the Lord. But Sunday ought to be set aside for a time of worship. But on Sunday now, we do what we want to do. That's why they got 8 o'clock service. We make it convenient. Only thing we're trying to do is get a crowd in, Sister Hill, get the money from the folk before the store get it. Huh? But listen, we have 8 o'clock service Early morning worship. Because guess what? That's where the bucket of folk come in. And now they got free for the rest of the day. Huh? But in my boyhood. Huh? Listen, it wasn't, it wasn't no such thing talking about going to no park, playing no game, doing this. Doing. No, Sunday was set aside for the Lord. You're going to get your behind up early on Sunday morning. And you're going to tell God thank you at home. And then you were going to Sunday school. And when you get out of Sunday school, you go right into morning worship. You leave morning worship, go home and get you some supper. Bring you behind right back at 3 o'clock for church training union, BTU. And then you go out of BTU right into evening worship. And then when you got out of evening worship, you might have 30 minutes to watch television because then you're going to be getting your school clothes and ready for the next day. Time to go to bed. But now we live in a new era and a new day. And as they would old folk would say, some of these young folk, they say a little dab or do. Huh? Catch eight o'clock worship, that's enough. I'm done with church for the day. Huh? But 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 we wonder why the world is in the shape that it's in. And I still hear Jesus saying, if my peoples, which are called by my it, it, it ain't gonna be no healing until you turn. You're wicked and you're evil way. Our children, they're out of control. You can't do nothing with them. Listen, mama didn't send us to church. They brought us to church. But nowadays we go to church and leave our children home. We ask them. You feel like going to church today? Huh? Mama says it begins at home. And it what? Spreads abroad. Y'all talking about praying in school? How you going to pray at school and you don't even pray at home? Huh? We talk about they took prayer out of school. Listen, my child still pray at Reebok Senior High School. Now, she may not pray out loud, but she's going to pray at that school. She's going to pray before she take them tests. She's going to pray before she even play a ball game. Because, listen, it has been instilled in her. But many of us, we're not teaching our children. We don't. Listen, they sit at the, well, they don't even sit at the supper table no more. Dad eat in one room in the den. The mom in the kitchen, the children outside, everybody just, no family prayer, no, no nothing. And then we wonder why these young people are in the shape and the condition. That, 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 that it's not their fault. Because listen, the Bible says train up a child in the way that the child ought to go. Now listen, the Bible never did say that the child would not go astray. It said that the child would never depart. Huh? But listen, listen, there is something on the inside that will remind you of your upbringing. But if you ain't been taught nothing. See, listen, it's just like, it's just like praying. Amen. Lord, bring all things to my remembrance. How you going to bring something to your remembrance to your study? Then you need to put it in there. All right. Yeah. Huh? You got to put something in. Uh -huh. right. You got to study. Yeah. Yeah. You got to prepare yourself. And once you study for that, then you can say, Lord, bring all things back to my remembrance. Uh -huh. Anybody know he'll do it? He'll bring it right back to you. But you got to store up something. Now listen. But when there is true fellowship. Fellowship is two fellows in the same ship. It brings on a spirit of gladness is the result. 
And to be glad is to have a feeling of joy and exhilaration that bubbles and illuminates. Gladness is hard to conceal. It is obvious and visible. It emanates from a feeling of security and warmth that is generated from a loving relationship. You, you, now, you ever seen phony people? You ever seen phony people? I mean, now listen, they, 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 you know they, they smiling, but they are phony. They are fake. They're like a plastic credit card. Now listen, but, but, but when folk are genuine, it is obvious and visible. You ever seen some people, they never smile. They never smile, nothing ever moves them. Matter of fact, me and my mother-in-law, we were talking this morning, and she was talking about my brother-in-law's daughter. That they never smile. None of the girls, they, they don't, none of them smile. And I said, but and you know, I had her to laugh this morning. Don't I said to her, Sister Dawson? I said, but they see y'all already say smiling faces, they're alive. At least they got the real expression on their face. <laughs> I said, they got the real expression on their face. I said, now you think that they frown and they're not happy, but they could be happy. But you got phony folks. Uh, yeah. 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 But they phony. So, so listen, smiling faces tell lies sometimes. And so, but listen, listen, but 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 gladness. Gladness is hard to conceal. Gladness is a cousin to joy, which comes from the inside. Jesus on the inside love. The Jesus on the outside is so easy to love. So listen, when you describe in Galatians chapter 5, a, a fruit of the spirit, joy is not conditional and is an enduring part of Christian life experience. A Christian is joyful regardless of his circumstance or his condition. I, I, I kid you not, it ain't no joke. My leg is hurting me. But in spite of it all, I still got joy. And the reason I got joy so here because, listen, I discovered that somebody don't have a leg and they ain't got joy. And so listen, listen, listen. Let me say it again. That, 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 that a Christian is joyful regardless of his circumstance or his condition. And so you see, a lot of folks got joy when they got money. Mm -hmm. Uh, but listen, you can have joy and be broke, busted, and disgusted. Because let me tell you something, when you learn and really understand life, life is not the abundance of things. That's it. Life is not about having things. Listen, I can have joy and don't have a dime in my and so every time I turn around, the Lord, he blessing me on the right, bless me on the left, bless me in the front, bless me in the back, bless me on the top and on the bottom. And so brothers and sisters, I'm blessed whether I have health or strength. I'm, 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 I'm blessed when I don't have a dime in my pocket. Do I have a witness here? But, but whether, whether the blessings we receive involve finance, health, peace of mind, or happy homes, we celebrate blessings then we desire that there is gladness but that's why that's why Deacon Henderson we're glad to be in the service because the Lord has blessed us but every day that we get from the Lord is a blessing Every day you open your eyes, we are glad that we have one more day. And I discovered no matter if it's raining or the sun is shining. In other words, I'm still glad because Psalms 118 and 24, it says this is the day which the Lord has made. 
And I want to know, is there anybody will rejoice and be glad? But I stop by today to tell you that uh, no matter what the day brings, it is a day that was created by an all power for God. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Do I have a witness in here today? But uh, it is a feeling of security in the hand of an all power for God. In other words, Gene Weldon Johnson declared he batted his eyes and the lightning flashed. Clapped his hand and the thunder began the road. Do I have a witness in here today? But when we say that we're glad to see another day. And yeah, it reminded me of a little song by uh, the mighty clowns of joy yeah and, uh, for it's another day's journey and uh, and i'm glad uh, about it uh, he gave me health and uh, strength uh, yeah and, uh, and i'm glad uh, about it uh, do i have wind this hell uh, and i'm glad uh, that i don't mind uh, praising uh, the lord uh, yeah, and, uh, for one Sunday, uh, yeah, I was too mean uh, to live, uh, and, uh, and I was scared uh, to die. But I heard uh, the voice uh, of Jesus said, uh, yeah, come unto me, uh, all uh, ye that are labor uh, and uh, are heavy laden. Yeah, and, uh, and I will, uh, yeah, uh, give you rest. Uh, do I have a witness here? Uh, and every now and then, uh, the storms uh, of life keep on uh, raging. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and, uh, and I'm reminded uh, of an old lady by the name of Sally. Yeah, she told her friend uh, that she'd been fishing uh, the day before. Uh, and uh, she was caught out in uh, the middle of the lake. Uh, yeah, when a storm uh, it came up from nowhere. And still, uh, when I heard uh, the choir sing, uh, amazing grace, uh, how sweet the sound uh, that saved uh, a wretch like me, uh, because uh, I was lost, uh, but now I'm found, uh, now uh, I can see, uh, and at that point, uh, the church members uh, knew why Sandy uh, was singing. Uh, and shouting in service uh, she found something uh, to sing about uh, she was glad uh, to be in the service uh, one more time uh, do I have a witness uh, I don't know uh, how you feel about it uh, but young Zion uh, last Sunday uh, about this time uh, I was laying uh, flat on my back uh, good thought of my uh, Pain, ha, shoot down my legs ha, I couldn't get comfortable ha, But here I am ha, In the Lord's house ha, And I shout ha, All by myself ha, All shucks now ha, And I'm glad ha, Deacon Russ ha, To be in the service ha, One more time ha, I'm not all ha, That I could be ha, I'm not all ha, That I should be ha, But thank God Thank God, thank God, thank God, I'm not what I used to be, anybody here, are you glad to be in the service, one more time, good God Almighty, I'm glad to bow down in prayer, I'm glad to help somebody as I pass along this way, I'm glad to Tell somebody uh, about the Savior. Uh, he's sweet, uh, sweet I know. Uh, storm cloud uh, may rise, uh, but I, uh, I uh, tell the world uh, I got a 
Savior. And he's sweet. He's sweet. Sweet I know. And I want to know. Is there anybody up in here? Do you know him? His name is Jesus. The lily down in the valley. Jesus. The Pharisees of 10,000. Jesus. The bright man. The morning star. Jesus. My rock. In a weary land. Bridge over troubled water. Jesus. He'll be a lawyer. In a courtroom. He'll be a doctor. In a sick room. Anybody here? Do you know him? And I'm glad. Good God Almighty. One Friday. Jesus. The lily. Down in the valley. Jesus. The first and the last. Picked up an old rugged cross. And I'm glad. Good God Almighty. He died. Anybody here know he died? Died on Friday. But early. I said early. Early. Sunday morning. He got up. Anybody here? Are you glad? He got up with all power. All Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Glad. 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 That he didn't stay dead. I'm glad you that he got up. With resurrection power. Got up. With saving power. Got up. With healing power. Got up. With delivering power. He got up. With all power. All power. All power. I'm glad. I said, I'm glad to be in the service. One more time. The doors of the church open.